That being said, when I first moved to Australia, I only had a thousand dollars in my bank account, well, so and everything turned out okay. So I'm probably not the right person. But that, it comes from learning. Like when I first yeah. travelled, I had about five hundred dollars in my pocket. And yeah. it was very stressful. It is stressful. and we're digital nomads that are currently living in Bali, Indonesia. So today we're just going to be talking a little bit about what it's like being a digital nomad in 2022 during the pandemic. There's definitely some downsides but some upsides as well. We've been doing this now for nearly three months. Before that, we were working online at home in Australia. So we've been in Bali for about two and a half months. We're actually looking at our next destinations. Around about New Year's, we wrote a list of places we wanted to go, and we're gonna be elaborating on that a little bit as well. So Lloyd and I started pursuing working online about three years ago and now we're fully functioning working online and just we make money while we sleep and just have to open our laptops in order to make money we have a few different ventures revenue streams that we make money predominantly e-commerce uh, we also sell digital products as well as our online course teaching other people how to do the same but it's been really great it's just given us the freedom to be able to live and work from anywhere which is the ultimate dream so originally our plan was just to move to bali an extended period of time so we started in Bali, but after being here for a couple of months, it's made us sort of want to travel a little bit more, especially around Southeast Asia and other places. Like we've made a list of countries we want to go to. And the main reason for that is we're kind of looking for somewhere to set up a home base and Bali originally was where we thought we wanted to do that but there's a few reasons why we want to look at some other places as well. The reason we started in Bali is because number one it's close to Australia also it's pretty affordable cost of living there's a lot to do and see in Bali. There's a big digital nomad community here as well yeah and we've just followed other people who have moved here and seem to be doing really well so it seemed like a logical place to start but some of the downsides I suppose the biggest one is our dog bear who's at home he's being looked after by my sister which she loves she loves yeah. him and he loves it there but, but I miss it we miss him we want him back <laughs> yeah so eventually we want to be able to set up a base somewhere where we can bring him over and um, that's not really a possibility in Bali at the moment so that's probably one of the big reasons and we just don't really want to rule other places out without seeing him first yeah yeah so we have a plan to visit every digital nomad location that we can this year uh, and share the pros and cons of them all with you guys. So make sure you guys are subscribed to our channel uh, and you can follow around if you are wanting to start living this digital nomad lifestyle. We're going to be reviewing the pros and cons of every place. Yeah, so just a couple of places on our list to give you an idea. We are going to be going to Thailand next where we'll be visiting Chiang Mai. It's a huge digital nomad community there I think it's a good place to get set up and we'll probably have a look around the rest of Thailand I've been there once myself Mandy's never been no so that's one spot um, Sri Lanka is another spot we want to head to this year yeah Vietnam Philippines Mexico there's a few <laughs> we're doing lots <laughs> so having said that that brings me to my next point which is what countries can you actually visit right now this isn't easy to answer because it pretty much changes day by day week by week it's very fluid my advice on that is just keep looking at the government websites for those countries so at the moment Thailand you can enter on a tourist visa without quarantine but having as said of, that as of February 1st yeah, but having said that, you do need to show a negative PCR test uh, when you fly to Thailand and then again after you land. So no quarantine could easily turn into 10 days quarantine. Yeah. And I think that's a pretty much across the board sort of thing. Anywhere you go, you're going to have to show a negative PCR test. Yeah. And if you test positive, you're going to have to isolate. But at the moment, Thailand, you can visit. Vietnam was closed all through the pandemic. 
They opened up around New Year's and pretty much closed straight away due to Omicron. So as of this recording, that's not possible. We know Sri Lanka, you do have to quarantine at a hotel for seven days, I believe, but you can enter. So that's just an example. And as I said, like it's changing almost daily. So you kind of can't plan too far ahead. No, no, we pretty much know what we're doing like week by week at this stage. You have to be very flexible if you're planning on traveling during the pandemic. If you have a spot you want to go to, I would suggest just just keeping an eye on it for a few weeks before going and even leaving it to like the last minute to book. Yeah. So we sort of choose countries at the moment just because we've just started this digital nomad experience. Uh, we have been working online for a while but the fact that we can't just go get a job if you know works a bit tight or anything like that we just want to make sure that we're not too tight on funds and are still living a comfortable lifestyle so we sort of choose uh, countries that are a bit more affordable to visit that's why we sort of started in southeast asia and are wanting to travel around here to begin with money goes a little bit further uh, as well as we want to help stimulate the economy here a lot more as well uh, more affordable countries for us western westerners to visit would be mexico and central america which are also on our lists for this year. You also have Portugal and other parts of Europe that are affordable for nomads as well. Yeah, and there are a lot of places that are affordable, good digital nomad spots, so just check them out. Do a quick Google search and you'll be able to find something there. So a question that we do get asked a little bit and we see some comments as well is about taxes and paying taxes in countries. So this can vary from country to country and it also depends on what visa you have. My advice is do your research on that country before going and before deciding what sort of visa you would want to get. But as a general rule, if you're only staying in a country for a couple of months, you don't have to pay taxes in that country. Maybe if you're staying for six months or more, you will have to file a tax return. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pay taxes, but you may need to file a return. So my advice, and I'm not a tax accountant, is do your research on each country's tax rules. So our top five tips for becoming a digital nomad in 2022 Number one would be to find a skill and something that you love and hone in on it. Uh, when Lloyd and I started, I loved all things creative. I loved, you know, videoing, editing, photography, modeling, uh, drawing, everything you can think of that was artistic. And somehow I've managed to make a income on, on everything that I enjoy doing. And I've progressively just learned how to get better at it through YouTube videos and doing small short courses online. For Lloyd, he really loved the digital marketing and analytical side, so he really honed in on that. So if you're wanting to become an, a nomad, you honestly can learn these things for free if you wanted anything that you're interested in and find a way to make money on it online. We've noticed since being here that a lot of typical digital nomads are actually people that have a certain skill set and they work for a company. They just work for that company online. We're a bit different in that sense that we don't have jobs. We're entrepreneurs, so we create businesses and we create income streams around our skill set. So there's that choice as well. If you want to learn a skill and then get an online job, that's definitely not a hard thing to do in 2022. No. Or you can go the other route, which is the route we took, which is creating our own businesses and income streams because that gives us the freedom to travel around and sort of not have to answer to anybody, not have to be on like a time frame or anything like that. Number two would be make sure you have savings in the bank just to fall back on. I mean, even a credit card. Yeah. Um, because you never know, it's more about what could go wrong. So you might be able to calculate how much money you need to live in, say Bali, Thailand or somewhere else. But you might run into a medical issue where you have to pay for that up front. You could get into some trouble there with maybe losing some items or getting things stolen that you have to replace. So it's always good to have savings to fall back on and that's what we've done. Yeah, um, traveling is continual problem solving and some things you just can't account for. That being said, when I first moved to Australia, I only had a thousand dollars in my bank account well, so, and everything turned out okay. So I'm probably not the right person. But that, it comes from learning. Like when I first yeah. traveled, I had about $500 in my pocket. And yeah. It was very stressful. It is stressful, but it does teach you a lot of lessons. Yeah. But yeah, we're not condoning that, but also 
we did it. <laughs> we often stay in co-working places because we really struggle with the work-life balance. Often, if we, <laughs> for example, we stayed in Uluwatu and we were on the beach, we found we weren't getting any work done because we met the mentality and the chill atmosphere of what was going on there. But then when we came back to Ubud and we were in an environment where everyone was working around us, I know there were co-working areas in Uluwatu, but we just work a lot better if there's other people grinding and working around us. It can get quite tempting to just go off and do all the fun things and then you have no money to continue. So I do recommend as far as work-life balance, schedule your work time, then you can go and enjoy wherever you are as much as you like and you'll enjoy it even more knowing that your work is done. So usually how Lloyd and I do it, we will work for a few days at a time and then when we feel like we're just not being as productive anymore, then we'll take a couple days off and then by the end of our couple of fun days, we're ready to smash work again. So our next tip would be to research the locations before heading there. Sometimes you might be surprised at how much the pandemic has actually affected areas that you still think might be busy. We were really surprised when we got to Bali that a lot of the places that we thought would be more happening and busy ended up being the most dead parts of Bali. So a lot has changed in the pandemic and that's why we're sort of sharing this information and our vlog with everyone because things are have changed a lot in the couple years. So definitely do your research, watch as many vlogs as you can and um, make your own vlog and help someone else figure it out yeah. for themselves. And our last piece of advice if you are interested in becoming a digital nomad is we do have our online course that's available. Uh, we teach all the ins and outs of building an online e-commerce brand. So we've left that down, the link in the description if you'd like to learn more. We teach everything, how to run an e-commerce business from anywhere in the world and make money while you sleep. So hit the link below and if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one. Bye!